Let Not Women Ear Complain by Robert Burns From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Let Not Women Ear Complain Let Not Women Ear Complain of Inconstancy in Love Let Not Women Ear Complain, Fickle Man is Apt to Rove Look abroad through nature's range, nature's mighty law is change. Ladies, would it not be strange, man should then a monster prove? Mark the winds and mark the skies, oceans ebb and oceans flow, sun and moon but set to rise, round and round the seasons go. Why then ask of silly man to oppose great nature's plan? We'll be constant while we can. You can be no more, you know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Chloe, an apology for going into the country by Dr. John Walcott, Peter Pindar, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. To Chloe, an apology for going into the country. Chloe, we must not always be in heaven, for our toying, ogling, kissing, billing, the joys for which I thousands would have given, will presently be scarcely worth a shilling. Thy neck is fairer than the alpine snows, And sweetly swelling beats the down of doves. Thy cheek of health a rival to the rose, Thy pouting lips the throne of all the loves. Yet, though thus beautiful beyond expression, Thy beauty fadeth by too much possession. Economy in love is peace to nature, much like economy in worldly matter. We should be prudent, never live too fast. Profusion will not, cannot always last. Lovers are really spendthrifts, tis a shame. Nothing their thoughtless wild career can tame. Till penury stares them in the face, and when they find an empty purse, Grown calmer, wiser, how the fault they curse, And limping, look with such a sneaking grace. Job's war-horse fierce, his neck with thunder hung, Sunk to an humble hack that carries dung. Smell to the queen of flowers, the fragrant rose, Smell twenty times, and then, my dear, Thy nose will tell thee, not so much for scent a thirst the twentieth drank less flavour than the first love doubtless is the sweetest of all fellows yet often should the little god retire absence dear chloe is a pair of bellows that keeps alive the sacred fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Woman's Answer by Adelaide Anne Proctor From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao A Woman's Answer I will not let you say a woman's part Must be to give exclusive love alone. Dearest, although I love you so, My heart answers a thousand claims besides your own. I love, what do I not love? Earth and air find space within my heart, And myriad things you would not deign to heed are cherished there, And vibrate on its very inmost strings. I love the summer, with her ebb and flow Of light and warmth and music, That had nursed her tender buds to blossoms, And do you know it was in the summer That I saw you first? I love the winter dearly too, But then I owe it so much, On a winter's day, bleak, cold and stormy you returned again when you had been those weary months away i love the stars like friends so many nights i gazed at them when you were far from me 
till i grew blind with tears those far-off lights could watch you whom i longed in vain to see i love the flowers happy hours lie shut up within their petals close and fast you have forgotten dear but they and i keep every fragment of the golden past i love too to be loved all loving praise seems like a crown upon my life to make it better worth the giving and to raise still nearer to your own heart you take i love all good and noble souls i heard one speak of you but lately and for days only to think of it my soul was stirred in tender memory of such generous praise i love all those who love you all who owe comfort to you and i can find regret even for those poor hearts who once could know and once could love you and can now forget well is my heart so narrow i who spare love for all these do i not even hold my favourite books in special tender care and prize them as a miser does his gold the poets that you used to read to me while summer twilights faded in the sky but most of all i think aurora lee because because do you remember why will you be jealous did you guess before i loved so many things still you the best dearest remember that i love you more oh more a thousand times than all the rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain Love's Blindness, Sonnet 148 by William Shakespeare From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Love's Blindness, Sonnet 148 O oh me! What eyes hath love put in my head Which have no correspondence with true sight? Or, if they have, where is my judgment fled that censures falsely what they see right? If that be fair whereon my false eyes dote, what means the world to say it is not so? If it be not, then love doth well denote love's eye is not so true as all men's. No, how can it? Oh, how can love's eye be true that is so vexed with watching and with tears? No marvel then, though I mistake my view, The sun itself sees not till heaven clears. O oh, cunning love, with tears thou keep'st me blind, Lest eyes well seeing thy foul faults should find. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Full many a glorious morning. Sonnet 33 by William Shakespeare. From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Full many a glorious morning. Sonnet 33. Full many a glorious morning have I seen, flatter the mountain tops with sovereign eye, kissing with golden face the meadows green gilding pale streams with heavenly alchemy anon permit the basest clouds to ride with ugly rack on his celestial face and from the forlorn world his visage hide stealing unseen to west with this disgrace even so my sun one early morn did shine with all triumphant splendour on my brow but out alack he was but one hour mine the region cloud hath masked him from me now Yet him for this my love no wit disdaineth. Sons of the world may stain, when heaven's sun staineth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alexis, Here She Stayed by William Drummond from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer alexis here she stayed alexis here she stayed 
among these pines sweet hermitress she did alone repair here did she spread the treasure of her hair more rich than that brought from the colchian mines she sate her by these musked eglantines the happy place the print seems yet to bear her voice did sweeten here thy sugared lines to which winds trees beasts birds did lend their ear me here she first perceived and here a morn of bright carnations did o'erspread her face here did she sigh here first my hopes were born and i first got a pledge of promised grace but ah what served it to be happy so sith passed pleasures double but new woe end of poem this recording is in the public domain rivalry in love by william walsh from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao rivalry in love of all the torments all the cares with which our lives are cursed of all the plagues a lover bears sure rivals are the worst by partners in each other kind afflictions easier grow in love alone we hate to find companions of our woe sylvia for all the pangs you see are labouring in my breast i beg not you would favour me would you but slight the rest how great soe'er your rigours are with them alone i'll cope i can endure my own despair but not another's hope end of poem this recording is in the public domain my dear and only love by james graham marquis of montrose from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter my dear and only love part first my dear and only love i pray this noble world of thee be governed by no other sway but purest monarchy for if confusion have a part which virtuous souls abhor and hold a synod in thy heart i'll never love thee more like alexander i will reign and i will reign alone my thoughts shall evermore disdain a rival on my throne he either fears his fate too much or his deserts are small that puts it not unto the touch to win or lose it all but i must rule and govern still and always give the law and have each subject at my will and all to stand in awe but gainst my battery if i find thou shunst the prize so sore as that thou setst me up a blind i'll never love thee more if in the empire of thy heart where i should solely be another do pretend a part and dares to vie with me or if committees thou erect and go on such a score i'll sing and laugh at thy neglect and never love thee more but if thou wilt be constant then and faithful of thy word i'll make thee glorious by my pen and famous by my sword i'll serve thee in such noble ways was never heard before i'll crown and deck thee all with bays and love thee evermore part second my dear and only love take heed lest thou thyself expose and let all longing lovers feed upon such looks as those a marble wall then build about beset without a door but if thou let thy heart fly out i'll never love thee more let not their oaths like volleys shot make any breach at all nor smoothness of their language plot which way to scale the wall nor balls of wildfire love consume the shrine which i adore for if such smoke about thee fume i'll never love thee more i think thy virtues be too strong to suffer by surprise those victualled by my love so long the siege at length must rise and leave thee ruled in that health and state thou wast before 
but if thou turn a commonwealth, I'll never love thee more. Or if by fraud or by consent thy heart to ruin come, I'll sound no trumpet as I want, nor march by tuck of drum, but hold my arms, like ensigns up, thy falsehood to deplore, and bitterly will sigh and weep, and never love thee more. I'll do with thee as Nero did, when Rome was set on fire, not only all relief forbid, but to a hill retire, and scorn to shed a tear to see thy spirit grown so poor, but smiling sing until I die, I'll never love thee more. Yet for the love I bear thee once, lest that thy name should die, a monument of marble stone, the truth shall testify, that every pilgrim passing by may pity and deplore my case and read the reason why I can love thee no more. The golden laws of love shall be upon this pillar hung, a simple heart, a single eye, a true and constant tongue, let no man for more love pretend than he has hearts in store. True love begun shall never end, love one and love no more. Then shall thy heart be set by mine, but in far different case. For mine was true, so was not thine, but looked like Janus's face. For as the waves with every wind, so sailst thou every shore, and leavest my constant heart behind, how can I love thee more? My heart shall with the sun be fixed for constancy most strange, and thine shall with the moon be mixed, delighting eye and change. Thy beauty shined at first more bright, and woe is me therefore, that ever I found thy love so light, I could love thee no more. The misty mountains, smoking lakes, the rocks resounding echo, the whistling wind that murmur makes, shall with me sing hey ho. The tossing seas, the tumbling boats, tears dropping from each shore, Shall tune with me their turtle notes, I'll never love thee more. As doth the turtle, chaste and true, her fellow's death regret, And daily mourns for his adieu, and ne'er renews her mate. So though thy faith was never fast, which grieves me wondrous sore, Yet I shall live in love so chaste, that I shall love no more. And when all gallants ride about these monuments to view, Whereon is written in and out, thou traitorous and untrue, Then in a passion they shall pause, and thus say, sighing sore, Alas, he had too just a cause never to love thee more. And when that tracing goddess fame from east to west shall flee, She shall record it to thy shame how thou hast loved me, and how in odds our love was such as few have been before. Thou loved too many, and I too much, so I can love no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Faithful Lovers by Anonymous from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the man and Lian Yao as Maori. The Faithful Lovers I'd been away from her for three years, about that, and I returned to find my Mary true. And though I'd question her, I did not doubt that it was unnecessary so to do. Twas by the chimney corner we were sitting. Mary, said I, have you always been true? Frankly says she, just pausing in her knitting. I don't think I've unfaithful been to you. But for the three years past, I'll tell you what I've done. Then say if I've been true or not. When first you left, my grief was uncontrollable. Alone I mourned my miserable lot, and all who saw me thought me inconsolable. Till Captain Clifford came from Aldershot. To flat with him amused me, while twas new. I don't count that unfaithfulness, do you? The next, oh, let me see, was Frankie Phipps. I met him at my uncle's, Christmas tide. And neath the mistletoe, where lips meet lips, he gave me his first kiss. And here she sighed. We stayed six weeks at uncle's. How time flew! I don't count that unfaithfulness, do you? Lord Cecil Fosswell, only twenty-one, lent me his horse. 
oh how we rode and raced we scoured the downs we rode to hounds such fun and often was his arm about my waist that was to lift me up and down but who would call just that on faithfulness would you do you know reggie vere oh how he sings we met twas at a picnic oh such weather he gave me look the first of these two rings when we were lost in clefton woods together oh what a happy time we spent we two i don't count that on faithfulness to you i've yet another ring from him do you see the plain gold circlet that is shining here i took her hand oh mary can it be that you quoth she that i am mrs vere i don't call that unfaithfulness do you no i replied for i am married too end of poem this recording is in the public domain the chronicle by abraham cowley from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the chronicle margarita first possessed if i remember well my breast margarita first of all but when a while the wanton maid with my restless heart had played martha took the flying ball martha soon did it resign to the beauteous catherine beauteous catherine gave place though loath and angry she to part with the possession of my heart to eliza's conquering face eliza till this hour might reign had she not evil counsels ten fundamental laws she broke and still new favourites she chose till up in arms my passions rose and cast away her yoke mary then and gentle anne both to reign at once began alternately they swayed and sometimes mary was the fair and sometimes anne the crown did wear and sometimes both i obeyed another mary then arose and did rigorous laws impose a mighty tyrant she long alas should i have been under the iron sceptred queen had not rebecca set me free when fair rebecca set me free twas then a golden time with me but soon these pleasures fled for the gracious princess died in her youth and beauty's pride and judith reigned in her stead one month three days and half an hour judith held the sovereign power wondrous beautiful her face but so weak and small her wit that she to govern was unfit and so susanna took her place but when isabella came armed with a resistless flame and the artillery of her eye while she proudly marched about greater conquests to find out she beat out susan by the by but in her place i then obeyed black-eyed bess her viceroy maid to whom ensured a vacancy thousand worse passions than possessed the interregnum of my breast bless me from such anarchy gentle henrietta then and a third mary next began then joan and jane and audria and then a pretty thomasine and then another catherine and then a long etc but i will briefer with them be since few of them were long with me and higher and a nobler strain my present empress does claim helen nora first of the name whom god grant long to reign end of poem this recording is in the public domain constancy by anonymous from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao constancy one eve of beauty when the sun was on the streams of bordal quiver to gold converting one by one the ripples of the mighty river beside me on the bank was seated a seville girl with auburn hair and eyes that might the world have cheated a wild bright wicked diamond pair she stooped and wrote upon the sand just as a loving son was going 
with such a soft small shining hand i could have sworn to a silver flowing her words were three and not one more what could diana's motto be the siren wrote upon the shore death not inconstancy and then her two large languid eyes so turned on mine that devil take me i set the air on fire with sighs and was the fool she chose to make me saint francis would have been deceived with such an eye and such a hand but one week more and i believed as much the women as the sand end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Age of Wisdom by William Makepeace Thackeray From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer The Age of Wisdom Ho! Oh, pretty page with the dimpled chin That never has known the barber's shear All your wish is woman to win This is the way that boys begin wait till you come to forty year curly gold locks cover foolish brains billing and cooing is all your cheer sighing and singing of midnight strains under bonny bell's window panes wait till you come to forty year forty times over let michael mass pass grizzling hair the brain doth clear then you know a boy is an ass then you know the worth of a lass once you have come to forty year pledge me round i bid ye declare all good fellows whose beards are grey did not the fairest of the fair common grow and weary some air ever a month was passed away the reddest lips that ever have kissed the brightest eyes that ever have shone may pray and whisper and we not list or look away and never be missed ere yet ever a month is gone jillian's dead god rest her beer how i loved her twenty years syne marian's married but i sit here alone and merry at forty year dipping my nose in the gascon wine End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Common Doom by James Shirley from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Common Doom. Victorious men of earth, no more proclaim how wide your empires are though you bind in every shore and your triumphs reach as far as night or day yet you proud monarchs must obey and mingle with forgotten ashes when death calls ye to the crowd of common men devouring famine plague and war each able to undo mankind death's servile emissaries are nor to these alone confined he hath at will more quaint and subtle ways to kill a smile or kiss as he will use the art shall have the cunning skill to break a heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain the author's resolution in a sonnet from fair virtue by george wilter from the world's best poetry volume two love part two Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Author's Resolution in a Sonnet from Fair Virtue Shall I, wasting in despair, die because a woman's fair? Or make pale my cheeks with care, cause another's rosy are? Be she fairer than the day, or the flowery meads in May? If she be not so to me, what care I how fair she be? Should my heart be grieved or pined, Cause I see a woman kind? 
or a well-disposed nature joined with a lovely feature be she meeker kinder than turtle dove or pelican if she be not so to me what care i how kind she be shall a woman's virtues move me to perish for her love or her well-deserving known make me quite forget mine own be she with that goodness blessed which may gain her name of best if she be not such to me what care i how good she be cause her fortune seems too high shall i play the fool and die those that bear a noble mind where they want of riches find think what with them they would do that without them dare to woo and unless that mind i see what care i though great she be great or good or kind or fair i will ne'er the more despair if she love me this believe i will die ere she will grieve if she slight me when i woo i can scorn and let her go for if she be not for me what care i for whom she be end of poem this recording is in the public domain Answer to Master Withers' Song, Shall I, Wasting Despair, by Ben Jonson, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter. Answer to Master Withers' Song, Shall I, Wasting Despair? Withers' Song, or Sonnet, appeared first in his Fidelia in 1615, and later with some changes, as printed above, in fair virtue sixteen twenty two johnson's parody here given came out in a collection of verses in sixteen twenty shall i mine affection slack cause i see a woman's black or myself with care cast down cause i see a woman brown be she blacker than the night or the blackest jet in sight if she be not so to me what care i how black she be Shall my foolish heart be burst, Cause I see a woman's cursed? Or thwarting hoggish nature, Join it in as bad a feature? Be she cursed, or fiercer than brutish beast, Or savage man, if she be not so to me, What care I how cursed she be? Shall a woman's vices make me her vices quite forsake? Or her faults to me made known, Make me think that I have none? Be she of the most accursed, and deserve the name of worst. If she be not so to me, what care I how bad she be? Cause her fortunes seem too low, shall I therefore let her go? He that bears an humble mind, and with riches can be kind. Think how kind a heart he'd have, if he were some servile slave. And if that same mind I see, what care I how poor she be? poor or bad or cursed or black i will ne'er the more be slack if she hate me then believe she shall die ere i will grieve if she like me when i woo i can like and love her too if that she be fit for me what care i what others be end of poem this recording is in the public domain Forever Unconfessed by Richard Monckton Milnes, Lord Houghton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Forever Unconfessed They seemed to those who saw them meet The worldly friends of every day Her smile was undisturbed and sweet His courtesy was free and gay But yet if one the other's name in some unguarded moment heard the heart you thought so calm and tame would struggle like a captured bird 
and letters of mere formal phrase were blistered with repeated tears and this was not the work of days but had gone on for years and years alas that love was not too strong for maiden shame and manly pride alas that they delayed too long the goal of mutual bliss beside yet what chance could then reveal and neither would be first to own let fate and courage now conceal when truth could bring remorse alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain advice to a girl by thomas campion from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin advice to a girl never love unless you can bear with all the faults of man men sometimes will jealous be though but little cause they see and hang the head as discontent and speak what straight they will repent men that but one saint adore make a show of love to more beauty must be scorned in none though but truly served in one for what is courtship but disguise true hearts may have dissembling eyes men when their affairs require must awhile themselves retire sometimes hunt and sometimes hawk and not ever sit and talk if these and such like you can bear then like and love and never fear end of poem this recording is in the public domain si jeunesse savait by edmund clarence stedman from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia si jeunesse savait when the veil from the eyes is lifted the seer's head is gray when the sailor to shore has drifted the sirens are far away why must the clearer vision the wisdom of life's late hour come as in fate's derision when the hand has lost its power is there a rarer being is there a fairer sphere where the strong are not unseeing and the harvests are not sear where ere the seasons dwindle they yield that you return where the lamps of knowledge kindle while the flames of youth still burn oh for the young man's chances oh for the old man's will those flee while this advances and the strong years cheat us still end of poem this recording is in the public domain Waiting for the Grapes by William Magin From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Waiting for the Grapes That I love thee, charming maid, I a thousand times have said, And a thousand times more I have sworn it, But tis easy to be seen in the coldness of your mien, That you doubt my affection, or scorn it ah me not a single grain of sense is in the whole of these pretences for rejecting your lover's petitions had i windows in my bosom oh how gladly i'd expose em to undo your fantastic suspicions ah me you repeat i've known you long and you hint i do you wrong in beginning so late to pursue ye but tis folly to look glum because people did not come up the stairs of your nursery to woo ye ah me in a grapery one walks without looking at the stalks while the bunches are green that they're bearing all the pretty little leaves that are dangling at the eaves scarce attract e'en a moment of staring ah me but when time has swelled the grapes to a richer style of shapes and the sun has lent warmth to their blushes then to cheer us and to gladden to chant us and to madden is the ripe ruddy glory that rushes ah me oh tis then that mortals pant while they gaze on bacchus's plant 
oh tis then will my simile serve ye should a damsel fair repine though neglected like a vine both ere long shall turn heads topsy-turvy ah me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Give Me More Love or More Disdain by Thomas Carew From The World's Best Poetry Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Give Me More Love or More Disdain Give me more love or more disdain The torrid or the frozen zone Brings equal ease unto my pain the temperate affords me none. Either extreme of love or hate Is sweeter than a calm estate. Give me a storm. If it be love, like Dunai in a golden shower, I swim in pleasure. If it prove disdain, That torrent will devour my vulture hopes. And he's possessed of heaven That's but from hell released. Then crown my joys or cure my pain. Give me more love or more disdain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Affair d'Amour for E. W. W. by Margaret Deland From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Affair d'Amour for e w w one pale november day flying summer paused they say and growing bolder o'er rosy shoulder threw her lover such a glance that autumn's heart began to dance o oh, happy lover a leafless peach tree bold thought for him she smiled i'm told and stirred by love his sleeping sap did move decking each naked branch with green to show her that her look was seen alas poor lover but summer laughing fled nor knew he loved her tis said the peach tree sighed and soon he gladly died and autumn weary of the chase came on at winter's sober pace o oh, careless lover end of poem this recording is in the public domain a renunciation by edward vere earl of oxford from the world's best poetry volume 2 love part 2 read for librivox.org by jason in panama a renunciation if woman could be fair and yet not fond or that their love were firm not fickle still i would not marvel that they make men bond by service long to purchase their good will but when i see how frail those creatures are i muse that men forget themselves so far to mark the choice they make and how they change how oft from phoebus they do flee to pan unsettled still like haggards wild they range these gentle birds that fly from man to man who would not scorn and shake them from the fist and let them fly fair fools which way they list yet for disport we fawn and flatter both to pass the time when nothing else can please and train them to our lure with subtle oath till weary of their wiles ourselves we ease and then we say when we their fancy try to play with fools oh what a fool was i end of poem this recording is in the public domain why so pale and wan by sir john suckling from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox .org by craig franklin why so pale and wan why so pale and wan fond lover 
pretty white a pale will when looking well can't move her looking ill prevail pretty why so pale why so dull and mute young sinner pretty why so mute will when speaking well can't win her saying nothing doot pretty why so mute quit quit for shame this will not move this cannot take her if of herself she will not love nothing can make her the devil take her end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Women's Question by Adelaide Ann Proctor From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for the LibriVox.org by Lian Yao A Women's Question Before I trust my fate to thee, or place my hand in thine, Before I let thy future give colour and form to mine, Before I peril all for thee, Question thy soul to-night for me. I break all sight of bonds, nor feel a shadow of regret. Is there one link within the past that holds thy spirit yet? Or is thy faith as clear and free as that which I can pledge to thee? Does there, within thy dimmest dreams, a possible future shine, Wherein thy life could henceforth breathe, untouched, unshared by mine? If so, at any pain or cost, oh, tell me, before all is lost, Look deeper still, if thou canst feel, within thy inmost soul, that thou hast kept a portion back, while I have staked the whole. Let no false pity spare the blow, but in true mercy tell me so. Is there within thy heart a need that mine cannot fulfil? One chord that any other hand could better wake or still? Speak now, lest at some future day my whole life wither and decay. Lives there within thy nature hid, the demon spirit, change, Shedding a passing glory still, on all things new and strange? It may not be thy fault alone, but shield my heart against thy own. Couldst thou withdraw thy hand one day, and answer to my claim, That fate, and that today's mistake, not thou, had been to blame? Some soothe their conscience thus, but thou wilt surely warn and save me now. Nay, answer not, I dare not hear, the words would come too late, yet I would spare thee all remorse, so comfort thee, my fate, whatever on my heart may fall, remember, I would risk it all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Not at all, or all in all, by Alfred, Lord Tennyson, from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian Yao. Not at all, or all in all, from Merlin and Vivian. In love, if love be love, if love be ours, faith and unfaith can ne'er be equal powers. On faith in aught is want to faith in all. It is a little rift within the lute that by and by will make the music mute, and ever widening slowly silence all. The little rift within the lover's lute, or little pitted speck in garnered fruit, that rotting inward slowly moulders all. It is not worth keeping, let it go, but shall it? Answer, darling, answer, no, and trust me not at all. Or all in all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When do I see thee most? By Dante Gabriel Rossetti, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. When do I see thee most? from the house of life when do i see thee most beloved one when in the light the spirits of mine eyes before thy face their altar solemnize the worship of that love to thee made known 
or when in the dusk hours we two alone close kissed and eloquent of still replies thy twilight hidden glimmering visage lies and my soul only sees thy soul its own o oh, love my love if i no more should see thyself nor on the earth the shadow of thee nor image of thine eyes in any spring how then should sound upon life's darkening slope the ground whirl of the perished leaves of hope the wind of death's imperishable wing end of poem this recording is in the public domain beauty by lord edward thurlow from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox org by thomas peter beauty tis much immortal beauty to admire but more immortal beauty to withstand the perfect soul can overcome desire if beauty with divine delight be scanned for what is beauty but the blooming child of fair olympus that in night must end and be forever from that bliss exiled if admiration stand too much its friend the wind may be enamoured of a flower the ocean of the green and laughing shore the silver lightning of a lofty tower but must not with too near a love adore or flower and margin and cloud capped tower love and delight shall with delight devour End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love in the Winds by Richard Hovey From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Love in the Winds When I am standing on the mountain crest Or hold the tiller in the dashing spray my love of you leaps foaming in my breast shouts with the winds and sweeps to their foray my heart bounds with the horses of the sea and plunges in the wild ride of the night flaunts in the teeth of tempest the large glee that rides out fate and welcomes gods to fight ho oh, love i laugh aloud for love of you glad that our love is fellow to rough weather no fretful orchid hot-housed from the dew but hale and hardy as the highland heather rejoicing in the wind that stings and thrills comrade of ocean playmate of the hills end of poem this recording is in the public domain kissing her hair by algernon charles swinburne from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Kissing her hair, kissing her hair, I sat against her feet, wove and unwove it, wound and found it sweet, made fast there with her hands, drew down her eyes, deep as deep flowers and dreamy like dim skies with her own tresses bound and found her fair kissing her hair sleep were no sweeter than her face to me sleep of cold sea bloom under the cold sea what pain could get between my face and hers what new sweet thing would love not relish worse unless perhaps white death had kissed me there kissing her hair end of poem this recording is in the public domain. My Sweet Sweeting From A. M. S. Dot Temp. Henry the Eighth From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin My Sweet Sweeting Ah, my sweet sweeting! my little pretty sweeting my sweeting will i love wherever i go she is so proper and pure full steadfast stable and demure there is none such you may be sure as my sweet sweeting in all this world 
as thinketh me is none so pretty to my e that i am glad so oft to see as my sweet sweeting when i behold my sweeting sweet her face her hands her minion feet they seem to me there is none so meet as my sweet sweeting above all other praise must i and love my pretty pigs and i for none i find so womanly as my sweet sweeting end of poem this recording is in the public domain lions to an indian air by percy by shelley from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia lines to an indian air serenade i arise from dreams of thee in the first sweet sleep of night when the winds are breathing low and the stars are shining bright i arise from dreams of thee and the spirit in my feet has led me who knows how to thy chamber window sweet the wandering airs they faint on the dark the silent stream the champak odors fail like sweet thoughts in a dream the nightingales complained it dies upon her heart as i must die on thine o beloved as thou art o lift me from the grass i die i faint i fail let thy love in kisses rain on my lips and eyelids pale my cheek is cold and white alas my heart beats loud and fast o oh, press it close to thine again where it will break at last end of poem this recording is in the public domain serenade from the spanish student by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume two Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Serenade from the Spanish Student. Stars of the summer night, far in yon azure deeps, hide, hide your golden light. She sleeps my lady sleeps sleeps moon of the summer night far down yon western steeps sink sink in silver light she sleeps my lady sleeps sleeps wind of the summer night where yonder woodbine creeps fold fold thy pinions light she sleeps my lady sleeps sleeps dreams of the summer night tell her her lover keeps watch while in slumber's light she sleeps my lady sleeps sleeps end of poem this recording is in the public domain. First Love from Don Juan, Canto One by Lord Byron. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. First Love from Don Juan, Canto One. Tis sweet to hear, at midnight on the blue and moonlit deep, the song and oar of Adria's gondolier, by distance mellowed, o'er the waters sweep. Tis sweet to see the evening star appear, 
tis sweet to listen as the night winds creep from leaf to leaf tis sweet to view on high the rainbow based on ocean span the sky tis sweet to hear the watchdog's honest bark bay deep-mouthed welcome as we draw near home tis sweet to know there is an eye will mark our coming and look brighter when we come tis sweet to be awakened by the lark or lulled by falling waters sweet the hum of bees the voice of girls the song of birds the lisp of children and their earliest words sweet is the vintage when the showering grapes in bacchanal profusion reel to earth purple and gushing sweet are our escapes from civic revelry to rural mirth sweet to the miser are his glittering heaps sweet to the father is his firstborn's birth sweet is revenge especially to women pillage to soldiers prize money to seamen tis sweet to win no matter how one's laurels by blood or ink tis sweet to put an end to strife tis sometimes sweet to have our quarrels particularly with a tiresome friend sweet as old wine in bottles ale in barrels dear is the helpless creature we defend against the world and dear the schoolboy spot we ne'er forget though there we are forgot but sweeter still than this than these than all is first and passionate love it stands alone like adam's recollection of his fall the tree of knowledge has been plucked all's known and life yields nothing further to recall worthy of this ambrosial sin so shone no doubt in fable as the unforgiven fire which prometheus filched for us from heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Sir Launcelot and Queen Guinevere by Alfred Lord Tennyson From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Sir Launcelot and Queen Guinevere like souls that balance joy and pain with tears and smiles from heaven again the maiden spring upon the plain came in a sunlit fall of rain in crystal vapour everywhere blue isles of heaven laughed between and far in forest deeps unseen the topmost elm tree gathered green from draughts of balmy air sometimes the linnet piped his song sometimes the throstle whistled strong Sometimes a sparhawk wheeled along, hushed all the groves from fear of wrong. By grassy capes with fuller sound, in curves the yellowing river ran, and drooping chestnut buds began to spread into the perfect fan above the teeming ground. Then, in the boyhood of the year, Sir Launcelot and Queen Guinevere rode through the coverts of the deer with blissful treble ringing clear she seemed a part of joyous spring a gown of grass-green silk she wore buckled with golden clasps before a light green tuft of plume she bore closed in a golden ring now on some twisted ivy net now on some tinkling rivulet in mosses mixed with violet her cream-white mule his pastern set and fleeter now she skimmed the plains than she whose elfin prancer springs by night to airy warblings when all the glimmering moorland rings with jingling bridle reins as fast she fled through sun and shade the happy winds upon her played blowing the ringlet from the braid she looked so lovely as she swayed the rain with dainty fingertips a man had given all other bliss and all his worldly worth for this to waste his whole heart in one kiss upon her perfect lips 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I saw two clouds at morning, by John Gardiner Calkins Brainerd, from the world's best poetry, volume two, love, part two, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian Yao. I saw two clouds at morning. I saw two clouds at morning, tinged by the rising sun, and in the dawn they floated on and mingled into one. I thought that a morning cloud was blessed, it moved so sweetly to the west. I saw two summer currents flow smoothly to their meeting, and join the course with silent force in peace each other greeting. Calm was their course through banks of green, while dimpling eddies played between. Such be your gentle motion, till life's last pulse shall beat, like summer's beam and summer's stream float on in joy to meet, a calmer sea where storm shall cease, a purer sky where all is peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Beautiful Lady by Thomas Woolner from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama My Beautiful Lady I love my lady, she is very fair Her brow is wan and bound by simple hair Her spirit sits aloof and high But glances from her tender eye in sweetness droopingly as a young forest while the wind drives through, My life is stirred when she breaks on my view. Her beauty grants my will no choice but silent awe, Till she rejoice my longing with her voice. Her warbling voice, though ever low and mild, Oft makes me feel as strong wine would a child. And though her hand be airy light of touch, It moves me with its might, as would a sudden fright. A hawk high poised in air, whose nerved wing tips tremble with might suppressed, before he dips in vigilance scarce more intense than I, when her voice holds my sense contented in suspense. Her mention of a thing, august or poor, makes it far nobler than it was before, as where the sun strikes life will gush, and what is pale receive a flush rich hues a richer blush my lady's name when i hear strangers use not meaning her to me sounds lax misuse i love none but my lady's name maud grace rose marianne all the same are harsh or blank and tame my lady walks as i have watched a swan swim where a glory on the water shone there ends of willow branches ride, Quivering in the flowing tide, By the deep river's side. Fresh beauties, howsoe'er she moves, are stirred, As the sunned bosom of a hummingbird At each pant lifts some fiery hue, Fierce gold, bewildering green or blue, The same, yet ever new. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. My Love, Her Portrait by Russell Powell Jacobi From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter My Love, Her Portrait My love is beautiful and sweet All good and gentle graces meet in her and loveliness complete my love is precious nor for me in all this world on land or sea can other worthy treasure be my love is constant in her eyes true pure and steadfast beauty lies serene and noble as the skies end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Christmas Scene or Love in the Country by Thomas Osborne Davis.
From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. A Christmas Scene, or Love in the Country. The hill blast comes howling through leaf rifted trees that late were as harp strings to each gentle breeze. The strangers and cousins and every one flown while we sit happy hearted together alone. Some are off to the mountain and some to the fair. The snow is on their cheek, on mine your black hair. Papa with his farming is busy today and Mamma's too good natured to ramble this way. The girls are gone, are they not, into town, to fetch bows and bonnets, perchance a bow down? Ah, tell em, dear Kate, tis not fair to coquette, though you, you bold lassie, are fond of it yet. You're not, do you say? Just remember last night. You gave Harry a rose, and you dubbed him your knight. Poor lad, if he loved you, but no, darling, no, you're too thoughtful and good to fret anyone so. The painters are raving of light and of shade, and Harry the poet of lake, hill and glade, while the light of your eye and your soft wavy form see to prosa like me by the hearth bright and warm. The snow on those hills is uncommonly grand, but you know, Kate, it's not half so white as your hand. And say what you will of the grey Christmas sky, still I slightly prefer my dark girl's grey eye. Be quiet and sing me, be quiet and sing me the bonny cuckoo, for it bids us the summer and winter love through, and then I'll read out on ballad that shows how tyranny perished and liberty rose. My Kate, I'm so happy, your voice whispers soft, and your cheeks flushes wilder from kissing so oft. For town or for country, for mountains or farms, what care I, my darlings entwined in my arms. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bedouin Love Song by Bayard Taylor from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Bedouin Love Song From the desert I come to thee on a stallion shod with fire, and the winds are left behind in the speed of my desire. Under thy window I stand, and the midnight hears my cry. I love thee. I love but thee, with a love that shall not die, till the sun grows cold, and the stars are old, and the leaves of the judgment book unfold. Look from thy window and see my passion and my pain. I lie on the sands below, and I faint in thy disdain. Let the night winds touch thy brow with the heat of my burning sigh and melt thee to hear the vow of a love that shall not die till the sun grows cold and the stars are old and the leaves of the judgment book unfold my steps are nightly driven by the fever in my breast to hear from thy lattice breathe the word that shall give me rest open the door of thy heart and open thy chamber door and my kisses shall teach thy lips the love that shall fade no more till the sun grows cold and the stars are old and the leaves of the judgment book unfold end of poem this recording is in the public domain zara's earrings translated from the spanish by john gibson lockhart from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by anusha ayer zara's earrings my earrings my earrings 
they've dropped into the well and what to say to musa i cannot cannot tell twas thus granada's fountain by spoke albuarethe's daughter the well is deep far down they lie beneath the cold blue water to me did musa give them when he spake his sad farewell and what to say when he comes back alas i cannot tell my earrings my earrings they were pearls in silver set that when my moor was far away i never should him forget that i never to other tongue should list nor smile on others tale but remember he my lips had kissed pure as those earrings pale when he comes back and hears that i have dropped them in the well oh what will musa think of me i cannot cannot tell my earrings my earrings he'll say they should have been not of pearl and of silver but of gold and glittering sheen of jasper and of onyx and of diamond shining clear changing to the changing light with radiance insincere that changeful mind unchanging gems are not befitting well thus will he think and what to say alas i cannot tell he'll think when i to market went i loitered by the way he'll think a willing ear i lent to all the lads might say he'll think some other lover's hand among my tresses noosed from the ears where he had placed them my rings of pearl unloosed he'll think when i was sporting so beside this marble well my pearls fell in and what to say alas i cannot tell he'll say i am a woman and we are all the same he'll say i loved when he was here to whisper of his flame but when he went to tunis my virgin troth had broken and thought no more of musa and cared not for his token my earrings my earrings o oh, luckless luckless well for what to say to musa alas i cannot tell i'll tell the truth to musa and i hope he will believe that i have thought of him at morn and thought of him at eve that musing on my lover when down the sun was gone his earrings in my hand i held by the fountain all alone and that my mind was o'er the sea when from my hand they fell and that deep his love lies in my heart as they lie in the well end of poem this recording is in the public domain hesperia by algernon charles swinburne from the world's best poetry volume two love Part two read for LibriVox .org by Jason in Panama Hesperia Out of the golden remote wild west where the sea without shore is, full of the sunset and sad, if at all, with the fullness of joy, as a wind sets in with the autumn that blows from the region of stories, blows with a perfume of songs and of memories beloved from a boy blows from the capes of the past over sea to the bays of the present filled as with shadow of sound with the pulse of invisible feet far out to the shallows and straits of the future by rough ways or pleasant is it thither the wind's wings beat is it hither to me o oh my sweet for thee in the stream of the deep tide wind blowing in with the water thee i behold as a bird borne in with the wind from the west straight from the sunset across white waves whence rose as a daughter venus thy mother in years when the world was a water at rest out of the distance of dreams as a dream that abides after slumber strayed from the fugitive flock of the night when the moon overhead wanes in the wan waste heights of the heaven and stars without number die without sound and are spent like lamps that are burnt by the dead comes back to me stays by me lulls me with touch of forgotten caresses 
one warm dream clad about with a fire as of life that endures the delight of thy face and the sound of thy feet and the wind of thy tresses and all of a man that regrets and all of a maid that allures but thy bosom is warm for my face and profound as a manifold flower thy silence is music thy voice as an odor that fades in a flame not a dream not a dream is the kiss of thy mouth and the bountiful hour that makes me forget what was sin and would make me forget where it's shame thine eyes that are quiet thy hands that are tender thy lips that are loving comfort and cool me as dew in the dawn of a moon like a dream and my heart yearns baffled and blind moved vainly toward thee and moving as the refluent seaweed moves in the languid exuberant stream fair as a rose is on earth as a rose under water in prison that stretches and swings to the slow passionate pulse of the sea closed up from the air and the sun but alive as a ghost re-arisen pale as the love that revives as a ghost re-arisen in me from the bountiful infinite west from the happy memorial places full of the stately repose and the lordly delight of the dead where the fortunate islands are lit with the light of ineffable faces and the sound of a sea without wind is about them and sunset is red come back to redeem and release me from love that recalls and represses that cleaves to my flesh as a flame till the serpent has eaten his fill from the bitter delights of the dark and the feverish furtive caresses that murder the youth in a man or ever his heart have its will thy lips cannot laugh and thine eyes cannot weep thou art pale as a rose is paler and sweeter than leaves that cover the blush of the bud and the heart of the flower is compassion and pity the core it encloses pity not love that is born with the breath and decays with the blood as is the cross that a wild nun clasps till the edge of it bruises her bosom so love wounds as we grasp it and blackens and burns as a flame i have loved overmuch in my life when the live bud bursts with the blossom bitter as ashes or tears as the fruit and the wine thereof shame as a heart that its anguish divides is the green bud cloven asunder as the blood of a man self-slain is the flush of the leaves that allure and the perfume as poison and wine to the brain a delight and a wonder and the thorns are too sharp for a boy too slight for a man to endure too soon did i love it and lost love's rose and i cared not for glories only the blossoms of sleep and of pleasure were mixed in my hair was it myrtle or poppy thy garland was woven with o oh my dolores was it pallor or slumber or blush as of blood that i found in thee fair for desire is a respite from love and the flesh not the heart is her fuel she was sweet to me once who am fled and escaped from the rage of her reign who behold as of old time at hand as i turn with her mouth growing cruel and flushed as with wine with the blood of her lovers our lady of pain low down where the thicket is thicker with thorns than with leaves in the summer in the break is a gleaming of eyes and a hissing of tongues that i knew and the lithe long throats of her snakes reach round her their mouths overcome her and her lips grow cool with their foam made moist as a desert with dew with the thirst and the hunger of lust though her beautiful lips be so bitter with the cold foul foam of the snakes they soften and redden and smile and her fierce mouth sweetens her eyes wax wide and her eyelashes glitter and she laughs with a savor of blood in her face and a savor of guile she laughs and her hands reach hither her hair blows hither and hisses as a low-lit flame in a wind backblown till it shudder and leap let her lips not again lay hold on my soul nor her poisonous kisses to consume it alive and divide from thy bosom 
our lady of sleep ah daughter of sunset and slumber if now it return into prison who shall redeem it anew but we if thou wilt let us fly let us take to us now that the white skies thrill with a moon unarisen swift horses of fear or of love take flight and depart and not die they are swifter than dreams they are stronger than death there is none that hath ridden none that shall ride in the dim strange ways of his life as we ride by the meadows of memory the highlands of hope and the shore that is hidden where life breaks loud and unseen a sonorous invisible tide by the sands where sorrow has trodden the salt pools bitter and sterile by the thundering reef and the low sea wall and the channel of years our wild steeds press on the night strain hard through pleasure and peril labor and listen and pant not or pause for the peril that nears and the sound of them trampling the way cleaves night as an arrow asunder and slow by the sand hill and swift by the down with its glimpses of grass sudden and steady the music as eight hooves trample and thunder rings in the ear of the low blind wind of the night as we pass shrill shrieks in our faces the blind bland air that was mute as a maiden stung into storm by the speed of our passage and deaf where we passed and our spirits too burn as we bound thine holy but mine heavy laden as we burn with the fire of our flight ah love shall we win at the last algernon charles swinburne end of poem this recording is in the public domain come into the garden maud by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the man lian yao as the red rose anusha ayer as the white rose thomas peter as the larkspur and sonia as the lily come into the garden maud come into the garden maud for the black bat night has flown come into the garden maud i am here at the gate alone and the woodbine spices are wafted abroad and the musk of the roses blown for a breeze of morning moves and the planet of love is on high beginning to faint in the light that she loves on a bed of daffodil sky to faint in the light of the sun that she loves to faint in its light and to die all night have the roses heard the flute violin bassoon all night has the casement jessamine stirred to the dancers dancing in tune till the silence fell with the waking bird and a hush with the setting moon i said to the lily there is but one with whom she has heart to be gay when will the dancers leave her alone she is weary of dance and play now half to the setting moon are gone and half to the rising day low on the sand and loud on the stone the last wheel echoes away i said to the rose the brief night goes in babble and revel and wine o oh, young lord lover what sighs are those for one that will never be thine but mine but mine so i swear to the rose for ever and ever mine and the soul of the roses went into my blood as the music clashed in the hall and long by the garden lake i stood for i heard your rivulet fall from the lake to the meadow and on to the wood our wood that is dearer than all from the meadow your walks have left so sweet that whenever a march wind sighs he sets the jewel print of your feet in violets blue as your eyes to the woody hollows in which we meet and the valleys of paradise the slender acacia would not shake one long milk bloom on the tree the white lake blossom fell into the lake as the pimpernel dozed on the lee 
But the rose was awake all night for your sake, Knowing your promise to me. The lilies and roses were all awake, They sighed for the dawn and thee. Queen Rose of the Rosebud Garden of Girls, Come hither, the dances are done. In gloss of satin and glimmer of pearls, Queen Lily and Rose in one. Shine out, little head, sunning over with curls, To the flowers, and be their sun. There has fallen a splendid tear From the passion flower at the gate. She is coming, my dove, my dear, She is coming, my life, my fate. The red rose cries, She is near, she is near and the white rose weeps she is late the larkspur listens i hear i hear and the lily whispers i wait she is coming my own my sweet were it ever so airy a tread my heart would hear her and beat were it earth in an earthly bed my dust would hear her and beat had i lain for a century dead would start and tremble under her feet and blossom in purple and red. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lochinvar, Lady Huron's Song, from Marmion, Canto V, by Sir Walter Scott, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer as Lady Huron. Craig Franklin as the bride's father. Thomas Peter as Lord Lochinvar. And Lian Yao as the bride maidens. Lochinvar, Lady Huron's Song, from Marmion, Canto V. O oh, young Lochinvar is come out of the west. Through all the wide border, his steed was the best and save his good broadsword he weapon had none he rode all unarmed and he rode all alone so faithful in love and so dauntless in war there never was knight like the young lochinvar he stayed not for break and he stopped not for stone he swam the esk river where ford there was none but ere he alighted at netherby gate the bride had consented the gallant came late for a laggard in love and a dastard in war was to wed the fair ellen of brave lochinvar so boldly he entered the netherby hall among bridesmen and kinsmen and brothers and all then spoke the bride's father his hand on his sword for the poor craven bridegroom said never a word oh come ye in peace here or come ye in war or to dance at our bridal young lord lochinvar i long wooed your daughter my say she denied love swells like the solway but ebbs like its tide and now i am come with this lost love of mine to lead but one measure drink one cup of wine there are maidens in scotland more lovely by far that would gladly be bride to the young lochinvar the bride kissed the goblet the knight took it up he quaffed off the wine and threw down the cup she looked down to blush and she looked up to sigh with a smile on her lips and a tear in her eye he took her soft hand ere her mother could bar now tread we a measure said young lochinvar so stately his form and so lovely her face that never a hall such a galliard did grace while her mother did fret and her father did fume and the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume and the bride maidens whispered twere better by far to have matched our fair cousin with young lochinvar one touch to her hand and one word in her ear when they reached the hall door and the charger stood near so light to the croup the fair lady he swung so light to the saddle before her he sprung she is won we are gone over bank bush and scour they'll have fleet steeds that follow quoth young lochinvar there was mounting mong grimes of the netherby clan 
fosters phoenix and musgraves they rode and they ran there was racing and chasing on canoby lee but the lost bride of netherby ne'er did they see so daring in love and so dauntless in war have ye e'er heard of gallon like young lochinvar end of poem this recording is in the public domain when your beauty appears by thomas parnell from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter as the man and sonia as the woman when your beauty appears when your beauty appears in its graces and airs all bright as an angel new dropped from the skies at distance i gaze and am awed by my fears so strangely you dazzle my eyes but when without art your kind thoughts you impart when your love runs and blushes through every vein when it darts from your eyes when it pants at your heart then i know that you're a woman again there's a passion and pride in our sex she replied and thus might i gratify both i would do still an angel appear to each lover beside but still be a woman to you end of poem this recording is in the public domain what my lover said by homer green from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia what my lover said by the merest chance in the twilight gloom in the orchard path he met me in the tall wet grass with its faint perfume and i tried to pass but he made no room oh i tried but he would not let me so i stood and blushed till the grass grew red with my face bent down above it while he took my hand as he whispering said how the clover lifted each pink sweet head to listen to all that my lover said oh the clover in bloom i love it in the high wet grass went the path to hide and the low wet leaves hung over but i could not pass upon either side for i found myself when i vainly tried in the arms of my steadfast lover and he held me there and he raised my head while he closed the path before me and he looked down into my eyes and said how the leaves bent down from the boughs overhead to listen to all that my lover said oh the leaves hanging lowly over me had he moved aside but a little way i could surely then have passed him and he knew i never could wish to stay and would not have heard what he had to say could i only aside have cast him it was almost dark and the moment sped and the searching night wind found us but he drew me nearer and softly said how the pure sweet wind grew still instead to listen to all that my lover said oh the whispering wind around us i am sure he knew when he held me fast that i must be all unwilling for i tried to go and i would have passed as the night was come with its dew at last and the sky with its stars was filling but he clasped me close when i would have fled and he made me hear his story and his soul came out from his lips and said how the stars crept out where the white moon led to listen to all that my lover said oh the moon and the stars in glory i know that the grass and the leaves will not tell and i'm sure that the wind precious rover will carry my secret so safely and well that no being shall ever discover one word of the many that rapidly fell from the soul-speaking lips of my lover and the moon and the stars that looked over shall never reveal what a fairy-like spell they wove round about us that night in the dell in the path through the dew-laden clover nor echo the whispers that made my heart swell as they fell from the lips of my lover End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Palabras Cariñosas, Spanish Air, 
by Thomas Bailey Aldridge. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Palabras Cariñosas, Spanish Air. Good night! I have to say good night to such a host of peerless things. Good night unto the slender hand, all queenly with its weight of rings. Good night to fond uplifted eyes, good night to chestnut braids of hair. Good night unto the perfect mouth and all the sweetness nestled there. The snowy hand detains me, then I'll have to say good night again. But there will come a time, my love, when, if I read our stars aright, I shall not linger by this porch with my farewells. Till then, good night. You wish the time were now? And I? You do not blush to wish it so? You would have blushed yourself to death to own so much a year ago. What? Both these snowy hands? Ah, then I'll have to say good night again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Seven Times Three Love by Jean Ingelow From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Seven Times Three Love I leaned out of window, I smelt the white clover Dark, dark was the garden, I saw not the gate now if there be footsteps he comes my one lover hush nightingale hush o oh, sweet nightingale wait till i listen and hear if a step draweth near for my love he is late the skies in the darkness stoop nearer and nearer a cluster of stars hangs like fruit in the tree the fall of the water comes sweeter comes clearer to what art thou listening, and what dost thou see? Let the star clusters glow, let the sweet waters flow, and cross quickly to me. You night moths that hover where honey brims over from sycamore blossoms, or settle, or sleep, you glowworms shine out, and the pathway discover to him that comes darkling along the rough steep. Ah, my sailor, make haste for the time runs to waste and my love lieth deep too deep for swift telling and yet my one lover i've conned thee an answer it waits thee to-night by the sycamore passed he and through the white clover then all the sweet speech i had fashioned took flight but i love him more more than e'er wife loved before be the days dark or bright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When the Kai Comes Hame by James Hogg From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter When the Kai Comes Hame Come all ye jolly shepherds that whistle through the glen, I'll tell ye of a secret that courtiers in a kin. What is the greatest bliss that the tongue of man can name? Tis to woo a bonny lassie when the kai comes hame, when the kai comes hame, when the kai comes hame, tween the gloaming and the mirk when the kai comes hame. Tis not beneath the coronet, nor canopy of state. Tis not on couch of velvet, nor arbor of the great. Tis beneath the spread in berk, and the glen without the name. We a bonny, bonny lassie when the kai comes hame. When the kai comes hame, when the kai comes hame. To the gloom and in the mirk, when the kai comes hame. 
there the blackbird bigs his nest for the mate he loves to see and on the topmost bough oh the happy bird is he where he pours his milk and dilly and love is a the theme and he'll woo his bonny lassie when the kai comes home when the kai comes home when the kai comes home between the gloaming and the murk when the kai comes home when the blurred bears the pearl and the days of tons of pea and the bonny luck and goin has folded up pretty then laverock frae the blue lift doops down and thinks nae shame to woo his bonny lassie when the kai comes home when the kai comes home when the kai comes home to the gloaming and the murk when the kai comes home see yonder pawky shepherd that lingers on the hill his ears are in the fold and his limbs are lying still it had on again to bed for his heart is in a flame to meet his bonny lassie when the kai comes home when the kai comes home when the kai comes home to the gloaming and the murk when the kai comes home when the little wee bit heart rises high in the breast, and the little wee bit star rises red in the east, oh, there is a joy, say dear, that the heart can hardly frame. We are bonny, bonny lassie, when the kai comes home, when the kai comes home, when the kai comes home, to the gloaming and the murk, when the kai comes home. Then since all nature joins in this love without alloy, oh why would prove a traitor to nature's dearest joy? Oh why would she was a crown with its pearls and its fame, and miss his bonny lassie when the kai comes home, when the kai comes home, when the kai comes home, to the gloaming and the murk, when the kai comes home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Milkmaid's Song by Sidney Dobell From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Milkmaid's Song Turn, turn for my cheeks they burn, turn by the dale my hairy Fill, pale, fill, pale, he has turned by the dale And there by the stile waits hairy Fill, 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 pale, fill, for there by the stile waits hairy the world may go round, the world may stand still, but I can milk and marry. Fill pale, I can milk and marry. View, view, oh, if we two stood down there now by the water, I know who'd carry me over the ford, as brave as a soldier, as proud as a lord, though I don't live over the water. Woo, woo, he's whistling through, he's whistling the farmer's daughter. Give down, give down, my crumpled brown, he shall not take the road to the town, for I'll meet him beyond the water. Give down, give down, my crumpled brown, and send me to my hairy. The folks of towns may have silken gowns, but I can milk and marry. Fill pale, I can milk and marry. Woo, woo, he has whistled through, he has whistled through the water. Fill, fill with a will, a will, for he's whistled through the water and he's whistling down the way to the town and it's not the farmer's daughter chur chur goes the cockchafer the sun sets over the water chur chur goes the cockchafer i'm too late for my harry and oh if he goes a soldiering the cows they may low the bells they may ring but i'll neither milk nor marry fill pale neither milk nor marry my brow beats on thy flank fill pale give down good wench give down I know the primrose bank fill pale between him and the town. Give down, good wench, give down, fill pale, and he shall not reach the town. Strain, strain, he's whistling again, he's nearer by half a mile. More, more, or oh, never before, were you such a weary while. Fill, fill, he's crossed the hill, I can see him down by the stile. He's past the hay, he's coming this way, he's coming to me, my Harry. Give silken gowns to the folk of towns, he's coming to me, my Harry. There's not so grand a dame in the land that she walks to night with Harry. Come late, come soon, come sun, come moon, oh, I can milk and marry. 
fill pail i can milk and marry woo woo he has whistled through my harry my lad my lover set the sun and fall the dew hey ho merry word what's to do that you're smiling over and over up on the hill and down in the dale and along the tree tops over the vale shining over and over low in the grass and high in the bough shining over and over a word have you ever a lover you were so dull and cold just now a word have you ever a lover i could not see a leaf on the tree and now i could count them one two three count them over and over leaf from leaf like lips apart like lips apart for a lover and the hillside beats with my beating heart and the apple tree blushes all over and the may bough touched me and made me start and the wind breathes warm like a lover pull pull and the pail is full and milking's done and over who would not sit here under the tree what a fair fair thing's a green field to see brim brim to the rim are me i have set my pail on the daisies it seems so light can the sun be set the dews must be heavy my cheeks are wet i could cry to have heard the daisies harry is near harry is near my heart's as sick as if he were here my lips are burning my cheeks are wet he hasn't uttered a word as yet but the air's astir with his praises my harry the air's astir with your praises he has scaled a rock by the pixie stone he's among the king cups he picks me one i love the grass that i tread upon when i go to my harry he has jumped the brook he has climbed the know there's never a faster foot i know but still he seems to tarry oh harry oh harry my love my pride my heart is sleeping my arms are white roll up roll up you dull hillside roll up and bring my harry they may talk of glory over the sea but harry's alive and harry's for me my love my lad my harry come spring come winter come sun come snow what cares dolly whether or no while i can milk and marry right or wrong and wrong or right quarrel who quarrel and fight who fight but i'll bring my pail home every night to love and home and harry we'll drink our can we'll eat our cake there's beer in the barrel there's bread in the bake the world may sleep the world may wake but i shall milk and marry and marry i shall milk and marry end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sally in Our Alley by Henry Carey From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Sally in Our Alley Of all the girls that are so smart, there's none like pretty Sally. She's the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. There is no lady in the land is half so sweet as Sally. She is the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. Her father, he makes cabbage nets, and through the streets does cry em. Her mother, she sells lace long, to such as please to buy em. But sure such folks could ne'er beget so sweet a girl as Sally. She is the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. When she is by, I leave my work, I love her so sincerely. My master comes like any Turk and bangs me most severely. But let him bang his belly full, I'll bear it all for Sally. For she's the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. Of all the days that's in the week, I dearly love but one day, and that's the day that comes betwixt the Saturday and Monday. For then I'm dressed all in my best, to walk abroad with Sally. She is the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. My master carries me to church, and often am I blamed, because I leave him in the lurch as soon as text is named. I leave the church in sermon time, and slink away to Sally. She is the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. When Christmas comes about again, oh then I shall have money, I'll hold it up and box it all and give it to my honey. I would it were ten thousand pound. I'd give it all to Sally. She is the darling of my heart, and she lives in our alley. My master and the neighbours all make game of me and Sally, and but for her I'd better be a slave and row a galley. 
but when my seven long years are out, oh then I'll marry Sally. Oh then we'll wed, and then we'll bed, but not in our alley. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Road by Paul Lawrence Dunbar From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter On the Road I was bound to see my gal tonight Oh, long de way, my dearie De moon ain't out, de stars ain't bright Oh, long de way, my dearie Dis horse of mine is powerful slow But when I does get to you, though your kiss'll pay me back and more. Do long de way, my dearie. De night is scary lack and still. Ho oh, long de way, my dearie. So for dat mournful whippoorwill. Ho oh, long de way, my dearie. De way so long with this slow pace. T'ud seem to me like saving grace. If you was on a nearer place. For long de way, my dearie. I hear de hootin' of de owl. Oh, long de way, my dearie. I wish dat watchdog wouldn't howl. Oh, long de way, my dearie. And everything both right and left seemed pen laid like it put itself in shape to scare me half to death. Oh, long de way, my dearie. I whistle so's I won't be feared. Oh, long de way, my dearie. But anyhow, I's kind of scared for long de way, my dearie. De sky been looking mighty glum. But you can make it lighten some, if you'll just say you's glad I come, do loan away, my dearie. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ganging Two and Ganging Fray by Eliza Cook, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Ganging to and ganging fray. Nay star was glinting out aboon. The clods were dark and hid the moon. The whistling gale was in my teeth, and round me was the deep snow wreath. But on I went the dreary mile, and sung right canty ah the while I gay at my plaid a closer fold. My hand was warm, my heart was bald. I dinna heed the storm and called while ganging to my Katie. But when I trod the same way back, it seemed a sad and wayful track. The bray and glen were lone and long. I dinna sing my canty song, and felt how sharp the sleet did fa', and couldna face the wind at all. Oh, sick a change, how could it be? I ken full well and say may yo the sunshine had been bloom to me while ganging fray my katie end of poem this recording is in the public domain